Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Thursday, the 22nd of December. Only two days left until Christmas Eve. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. We'll be singing our hymn throughout the service. It's hymn number 362, Tell Out My Soul, and we'll sing the first verse now. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice tender to me. The promise of his word in God my Savior shall my heart rejoice. Our psalm is Psalm 146, which we say together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lift up, lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now let us sing the second verse of our hymn. Tell out my soul the greatness of his name. Make known his might, the deeds his arm has done. His mercy show from age to age the same. His holy name, the Lord, the mighty one. Our gospel is Luke 1, 39 to 56. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? The mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of Christ. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is, of course, the story of Mary going to visit her cousin, her elderly cousin, who's pregnant with the birth, with uh, the child who will be John the Baptist, as Mary is pregnant with Jesus. So these two cousins are going to, uh, to grow up to be very, very powerful and respected men um, and make a huge difference, of course, Jesus making a difference to, to all the world. Uh, but I think it's very, very important to understand that um, why did God choose when he wanted to become one of us? Why did God choose to be born in this way? He was born to a mother who had no power in her society. Uh, she was young uh, and she lived what seems to have been uh, quite a poor life. Um, so what does it mean? Uh, Mary, of course, when she sings her hymn, The Magnificat, uh, she sings really a hymn of revolution about the mighty being brought down from their thrones, but raising up the poor and the lowly. Um, she's talking about a revolution of society, a revolution of the values of the world. And that is exactly what Jesus did. Jesus turned the world on its head. Um, he says the first will be last and the last will be first. Jesus is always saying that the one lifted up is the poor and the lowly. And so I think it's very important to understand that Jesus was born of a lowly person. Uh, Jesus wasn't born to uh, some in, ro uh, in a royal palace. Um, if Jesus hadn't been born of someone like Mary, he wouldn't have been born in a stable and placed in a feeding trough and an animal's feeding trough for a crib. And it was very important that Jesus be born the humblest of us all. Because in choosing to be born in that way, God choosing to come among us in that way, God shows his care for the poor, the lowliest, the outcast. And that is what Jesus did over and over and over again in his ministry. And I think it forces us to uh, to know that the ways of the world, which are about power and wealth, uh, are not the ways of God and not the ways of Jesus. Jesus, too, wants us to care for the lowly, the poor, the outcast, the refugee, the stranger, those in need. Uh, so that's what Christmas is about. Jesus is born in such a lowly manner of such a lowly mother because he's showing us that we need to show that care and that is the message of Christmas. Let us sing the next verse of our hymn. Tell out my soul the greatness of his might, powers and dominions lay their glory by, proud hearts and stubborn wills are put to flight, the hungry fed, the humble lifted high. And now let us say together the words of the Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for peace. We pray for peace in a world that shows so much war and violence internationally, but also even within our own cities and communities. We pray for the tumult of, of violence and discord. And we pray for our, um, our vocation for being peacemakers in our world and in our communities. We pray in a world where um, so many people are cruel to others, and we know that this is not God's choice for us. We pray for the people of, of uh, Ukraine, Iran, the people of Syria, the people of many African nations and, and parts of Asia and Latin America. We pray for world leaders wherever they are, that they might have their hearts transformed into uh, seekers for peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for the sick, those known to us, our friends and family who are sick, and those unknown to us. In our cycle of prayer for the sick, today we pray for David Reed, Olive Mould, Yvonne Lytle, Berna Laverne, Carolyn, Marion Angel, Shirley Cooper, Ron Harris, Joanne Canerva. We pray, O Lord, that all the sick might know the healing presence of Jesus and have wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. Today, we continue to pray for Peter McCarroll, Jody Cocker. We pray for Murray Hines, in memory of Murray Hines. And we pray for Rita, Rita Camilleri and Vittorio Panza and others who lost their lives in the shooting in Vaughan. We also pray for the homeless man who was killed in Toronto. We pray, giving thanks, O Lord, that you promise to be faithful to us in death and life beyond death. And we pray that all who mourn might know the peace in their soul that their loved ones are at rest and in God's presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households in our parish list. And if you are joining us from another parish or community, I invite you to pray for members of your community as well. Today, we pray for Valerie and Benjamin Hall. We pray for Angela Hunter, for Michael Hunter and Megan Bronwyn and Reese. For Donald and Barb Hux, for Beverly Jacobs, for John Jarrett, for Paul Johnson, for Peter and Margaret Johnson, for John, Karen, Alexander, and Samantha Jostling, and for Jerry Kazur. We pray for each one, O oh Lord. We pray for their well being, health, and safety. We pray for them at this Christmas time as they prepare to. Uh, welcome family and friends in whatever activities they are doing. We pray, O oh Lord, that they might all experience the true joy of knowing Christ to be born, not only at Christmas, but in their own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, today we pray for four dioceses. We pray for the Diocese of Okigwe in the Church of Nigeria, the Diocese of Okigwe North, Diocese of Okigwe South and the Diocese uh, all in the Church of Nigeria and the Diocese of Okinawa uh, in the Church in Japan. We pray for each of their bishops, clergy and people. We pray for them in their mission in the world that they might have the resources and the will to carry it out and might be encouraged knowing that the world is praying for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for another brother of the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Today we pray for Brother Sean Glenn. We give you thanks, O Lord, for his wisdom, for his preaching and teaching and all of his ministry and the ways he is making a difference in the lives of not only his brothers, but a much wider community in the world. We pray for him and his work in spiritual direction. And we pray, O oh Lord, that uh, he might know that there is a wide community of people praying for him, including us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us pray our prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And we pray our collect for the fourth Sunday of Advent. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, 
that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And let us sing the last verse of our hymn. Tell out my soul the glories of his word. Firm is his promise and his mercy sure. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. To children's children and forevermore. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I hope that uh, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope that you'll be able to attend at one of our services. We have four services or three services on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m., which is especially geared for families and, and young children. Uh, also at 8 p.m. and at 10 p.m. And then Christmas Day, we have at 10 a.m. Only one of the services is going to be live streamed, and that is the 8 p.m. on Christmas Eve. So if you can't join us in person, you can join us on the live stream, or that service will also be saved later uh, for later viewing as well. So I hope you'll be able to attend either in person or, uh, or uh, online in one of those services. Blessings to you, good night's sleep, and a Merry Christmas.